Hey, what's up guys? Pat here from smartpassiveincome.com. Welcome to video four of the how to start an email list series. If you haven't checked out any of the other videos, I would recommend going to startanemaillist.com to get all the other videos plus some other information and giveaways for you. In this video, we're specifically talking about autoresponders. So what are they? Why are they important? How to set one up? And then finally, some tips to help you enhance your autoresponder sequence. So here we go. All right, guys, let's talk about your autoresponder and why this is so important. It's literally one of the biggest mistakes people make is not using their autoresponder. So this is what typically happens. People subscribe in one way, shape, or form, and they get the first email, which is a follow-up, right? This is the first email they get uh, from you, which may be a, hey, thanks for subscribing. Uh, here's what to expect. Here's some articles or links that, that you can go to. Whatever it may be, that's typically what happens no matter what. But then a person is subscribed on your list and they have to wait for you to send another email. So you, whenever you feel like writing, you write a broadcast email, which we'll talk about in the next video, and then it gets sent to everybody or a certain segment of your list. But until that happens, this person is sitting here on your list, kinda just wondering what the heck is going on. Like, hmm, I didn't get any emails from so-and-so. I wonder what happened. And then all of a sudden you send a broadcast and this person may have forgotten about you or maybe they thought they think it's spam or something because you haven't really kept in constant con uh, contact with them. But an autoresponder, what this does is it automatically sends them an email X number of days later with uh, whatever you wanna send them. So this could be helpful content related to what they signed up about, or it could be an, an offer, or just more information, links to older articles. I'll share with you some more ideas for what you, what you can put in your autoresponder sequence. But what's really cool is about, uh, about this is you write these emails ahead of time. So if a person subscribes on day one, on day, let's say seven days later, they get email number two. So let me do a different color here. They may, uh, they might get the first autoresponder email, which is uh, this one here. Then maybe uh, seven days after that one, they get this one. Then maybe three days after this one, they get this email and so on and so forth. You can have it go on as long as you like. But what's really cool here is that automatically, again, because people have subscribed, and because this gets dripped out to them sequentially after they subscribe, and you've already pre-written these emails, you're keeping in contact with them no matter what. You're always continually providing value automatically, which is huge. If you can automate the value-giving process, that is absolutely huge, and that's where your autoresponder comes into play. So seven days after they subscribe, they get this email. Then at the same time, somebody else might be subscribing for the very first day and they're gonna get, seven days later, this email. So it's kinda of like a chain that people are getting into as they subscribe. Now, you can have these be different things, like I said, promotions, content, uh, even survey questions. One of the best things that you can do is actually have one of these be a, hey, what are you struggling with email? And that way, you're gonna get people to reply to share with you what they need help with, which can then help you determine what content to create, what products to make, all those sorts of things. Just amazing, amazing things can happen with your autoresponder, and it doesn't take very long to set up. You just have to figure out what emails to write and then have them be dripped out sequentially over time, and I'll show you how to do that here in ConvertKit. Okay, so here we are back in ConvertKit, my email service provider, and mind you, this is simply a test account that I created just for this tutorial. As you can see, there's one subscriber, and that is uh, myself, and then there's one form down here which we created together in video number one of this tutorial. In just a moment, I will show you my main account with nearly 200,000 subscribers and what the sequences look like there. Uh, but no matter what email service provider you're using, typically there's gonna be a way for you to create a sequence or an autoresponder like we're talking about in this video. If you're in ConvertKit, all you have to do is head on over to Sequences. And as you can see, we have yet to start one, so I'm gonna hit Create Sequence there. I'm gonna name this uh, Main List just to kind of be an example. Uh, now let's get into the main list here. Uh, I'll get into the settings and reports in the second half of the video here where I show you my own dashboard, but for now let's just focus on the content. This is really, really beautiful here in ConvertKit, the way they have it set up, because you can see all the emails in your sequence here, just one on top of the other. You can easily uh, move them around and switch them. And they also make it really easy to work with. So none of these emails will go live until you switch the status from draft to published. I'm not gonna do that right now. And make sure that the first email, when you click on this little pencil icon here, this allows you to determine how many days uh, are in between the previous emails. Now your first email should be zero days because that, that you want to go out immediately. And you'll see when you change this to zero, it turns it into immediately. So I'm gonna hit that. Uh, so this first email 
after a person subscribes, they're gonna get this email immediately. And what's really cool also about here in ConvertKit is they give you a little bit of a structure, a little bit of a head start on what should be included in these emails. This first one I completely agree with, introduction content. Who are you, what do you have to offer, what can a person expect when they're here on this list? So you wanna make sure and kind of set them up uh, to want to open the next emails. So uh, you can uh, edit the subject line here, obviously, and the email content too. Now what's really cool is, let's go to the second message, an educational message, that's great. You wanna hit them over the, top, over the top with some amazing value and have them realize that yes, they are in absolutely the right spot and they would be crazy not to open your next emails. So uh, let's switch this to, let's say seven days later, a week later. And what's really cool is you can also turn on and off which which days you want people to get these emails. So I don't typically send emails on Saturday and Sunday. And also to make sure I don't send people more than one email. I'll typically turn off some of these days as well. So I know that Mondays, for example, are the days that I came out, uh, come out with blog posts, and often I'll send a broadcast email on that day. So I'll turn that day off in the autoresponder to make sure that, well, I'm gonna be sending broadcast emails on that day, typically. It doesn't always happen, but I will. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they're gonna get these autoresponder emails. So sometimes it might not necessarily be seven days, but around seven days, depending on those days that I have on and off, that's gonna happen. Again, I can change the subject line and the email content here. Uh, let's do another educational email seven days later. From there, I wouldn't wait more than seven days in between kind of staying in constant contact with your audience from here. Uh, and then the th third email after the initial follow-up email is gonna be your soft sell. So this is just a, a framework of what you can do if you have a product to offer, educational message, educational message and a little bit of an introduction to a product uh, a week after that and then four days after that or even I would say uh, two days after that uh, you can switch it up and have a little soft sell to uh, you know be your first pitch to that product and again think about it when a person subscribes they are automatically getting these emails sequentially and so you are automating the selling process by doing this which is really cool like I said, you can move these around if you wanted to. Uh, I want the soft sell to be on the fifth email here uh, and then you can draft that one and have that one be uh, let's see. Oh, you, I guess you could have hours later too, which is really cool. That's new. I hadn't seen that yet. Uh, four days, five days, six days, seven days later. So again, you can play around with this. You can uh, preview these emails if you'd like in your browser, actually send the email to yourself to make sure that it's great, which I actually would highly recommend you do. Now, what I'm going to do is actually switch on over to my own dashboard to show you what that looks like. Don't be overwhelmed. There's a lot of pieces uh, that are happening and, and moving parts there, uh, but I will show you some of my sequences to show you kind of how I have them set up, and I'll also show you some of the reporting features too. All right, so here we are uh, in my dashboard of ConvertKit. As you can see, uh, much larger numbers, thankfully, and you can see graphs being created here. These different shades of blue uh, are based on where people are subscribing from, so I can get a really nice snapshot of, of what's happening here. You can even see the seasonality a little bit in, here in December around Christmas time versus you know after that in January, which is really cool. If you scroll down, you'll see a number of different forms here. There's a ton of them. A lot of them are actually connected to lead pages, which is why you see uh, the number of visitors as being zero because people are actually visiting the lead page form, but they are connected to these. And I wanna take you into my sequences really quick just to show you there's a lot of sequences going on too. I have bucket one, bucket two, bucket three. I'll explain more about what that means in video number six because I'm actually dividing my main list into different smaller lists depending on where they're at in their business. It allows me to better serve my audience, send them better emails, and actually uh, get, get a much higher open rate as a result. But for now, I wanna show you the sequence for the zero to 100 email challenge. This is the evergreen challenge that you can check out at 100emails.com. It's gonna help you get 100 emails to start out with if you'd like. I wanna just show you what the back end of this looks like because it's a very simple but powerful example of what, what you can do with these sequences. Now you'll notice a few things here. This email sequence is very short. This is because it's simply a 72 hour email challenge. And this is great because it didn't take very long to set up. It just required a lot of uh, great content that was actually actionable as many of you have maybe already participated in, uh, which is really cool. So the first email here, you can see it goes out immediately. The next one, one day after the last email, and then the last one, one day after that previous email. They're all very simple, but I will say that if you scroll through this, you'll actually see just how long these emails are. Uh, they are quite long and that is 
atypical. Your autoresponder emails should be much shorter, especially if it's just one or two tips or, or quick hits or even surveys. You don't want them to be super long. They are in this case simply because this is an email course and people expect these emails to be longer. That's the one thing that you want to make sure is included in your very first email is that expectation in terms of what people should get. So if your emails are a little bit longer, let them know ahead of time that they will be longer so they're not surprised. So this first email here gets sent out immediately. Like I said, welcome to the zero to 100 email challenge. And it basically goes through uh, what to look forward to and how this all works and, and what to expect. Uh, I will go over some best practices within this email and, and just things that you should include in all of your emails that are uh, ways for you to increase click-through rates and just make it easier for your, uh, your subscriber to read through. Um, so I'll actually, let me do that right now. So some of the things that you should pay attention to are obviously the subject line is going to be really important. You want the subject line to really capture people, capture people's attention here. So what you can do is uh, obviously make it related to whatever it is they signed up for. Here it's very simple. Welcome to the zero to 100 email challenge. Uh, so not quite difficult uh, here. I'll, sh I'll show you in some of my other sequences later how I've managed to work with the email subject line. But don't make it too long either. I would even say that this is maybe a little too long because when people view it in their phones, they're only going to see the first maybe this uh, the, this many characters. So keep that in mind as you're moving forward. Um, secondly, the other thing that you can notice here really quick is the high subscriber first name sort of tag there. What that means is if you actually click on this, and I'll show you what that means in just a sec, you can personalize it. So if you are collecting the subscriber's first name, you can automatically enter that first name here uh, after high. So it makes that greeting really nice. It makes it so that's it's all connected. Uh, next, notice the size of these paragraphs. They aren't very long at all, maybe four lines maximum. Actually, let me scroll down just to give you a better example here. Here, I'll show you that personalized tab really quick. If you scroll down here, you'll see just how short these paragraphs are. So, you know, even even one lines here, uh, three lines, one line, three line, two line, three lines, one line. That is the best practice within your emails because people are uh, either reading on their desktop or on their mobile. And the longer the paragraph, the harder it is to read, and the less likely it is a person is going to continue to read your email. So make sure that uh, your emails are very much kind of broken into one to two sentences max uh, before you start a new paragraph. Additionally, you'll notice this link here. This is a link to download a quick start guide, and that's simply a link uh, that I included to make it easier for people to get started if they have, it yet, if they have yet to even pick an idea for what their email list is going to be about. Uh, notice how many lines there are here. It's just one line. This is a great tip. Make sure your links are just simply on a line all in its own, and that's because it makes it easier to click. There's no, there's nothing else around it that that people can click on. And again, a lot of people are reading on their phones, so it makes it really easy to make sure they don't fat finger this and click on perhaps something else. So it just makes it very clear and simple. Here's the link for your thing, and of course, there's a call to action right by, right by behind it. Click the link below to download the guide to your computer. That's all, that's another thing. Make your call to actions very clear, and then if there's a link, make them on their own line. Okay, so I'm going to actually scroll back up and show you some of the uh, settings and reporting features here, and then I'll take you into some other uh, sequences to show you some of the differences. So settings, really easily, I'm not going to Actually, yeah, I, I haven't really changed anything, so it doesn't matter. I don't need to save it, but here you can uh, change the sequence name. You can change where the emails are coming from. You can uh, change the days that the emails are being sent. Now, because this is a 72-hour email challenge, I didn't want to mark off some of the days in case people subscribed on a particular day. And then uh, you can have templates included if you want. You can exclude certain subscribers depending on what tags or sequences they're already a part of. You can duplicate the sequence. So let's say I wanted to run an experiment or do this again somewhere else. I can create a new landing page and actually duplicate the sequence uh, and then change it up and tweak it just a little bit and start to compare the results. And of course, I can delete the sequence if I wanted to. Now, I'm not going to do that, so I'll, let me cancel. Uh, let me go back into here and hit reports. You'll get some really nice reporting features. Every email you get to see clearly the open rate, the click-through rate, uh, how many sends there are, uh, and whatnot. So this is a really great example of just what happens when the emails that they're getting are very relevant to what it is that they subscribe for. So these are very high open rates, relatively speaking, industry-wide. Average is about 10 to 15%. Here we see 82% in the first one. Of course, that's the first one. They're expecting it. But here, in the second email, 64%. The third email, 58%. Uh, and a click-through rate of almost 50% in that first email. That's unheard of, but I also know it helps that it, 
that link, like I said, is on its own line. And then I have a few links that are related to a uh, special Facebook group. So I, I didn't expect everybody to click on these uh, links that are in these follow-up emails. But anyway, that's the kind of information you can get from your emails. So if you see that, for example, one of the emails has a 10% open rate and all of your other ones have a 30 to 50% open rate, well, then you know that there's something wrong with perhaps that subject line. People aren't even opening that email, making sure that it's being sent on the right days, making sure that that email subject is, is you know, spot on or, or play around with it a little bit to increase that open rate. Uh, if a click-through rate is quite low and you know there's a link in that email, well, maybe it's not on its own line or you didn't set it up properly or maybe you even forgot to link it. Uh, and then uh, here you can see how many times it's been fired off as well. So there are people, as you can see, who are still uh, yet to receive day two and day three because, well, people just signed up to the challenge. So uh, they haven't gotten those emails yet. Now, going back to the content, I'm just gonna make sure everything's good. Yep, okay, I'm gonna show you one more sequence based on a bucket that I created. And this is for what I call bucket one, or the people who have marked themselves as somebody who has yet to start a business. And I'll show you how that all works in video number six in this tutorial. There are uh, a number of emails in this autoresponder sequence. Uh, they are typically much shorter, as you can see there. And a lot of them have links, uh, as you can see maybe here, and they're on their own uh, line, thankfully. And then. Finally, I wanted to talk about this first email that people get. After people tell me, uh, in some of the emails they click links to tell me that, well, they haven't even started their own business yet, or depending on where they subscribe, I can tag them as somebody who has yet to even start their business. I wanna send different emails to those people because if I send people who have yet to start a business an article or an email about advanced SEO strategies, what do you think that's gonna do? It's just gonna scare them. It's gonna make them feel overwhelmed. So I want them to not receive those emails, but I wanna send them emails that matter. And so this first email, which is one of my most powerful emails works really, really well for this particular group, and I'm gonna show you why. For one, again, these are people who have yet to start a business. The subject line plays right into that. Future entrepreneurs read this, right? So of course they're gonna open it, and let's see what the, what the open rate is for this first email that they get. So this one has been fired off 38,000 times with an open rate of 77.1%. You can see even though open rate's down here, industry standard, 10 to 15%. Look at this, 40 2%, 50%, 62%. This is a great one, and it shows you that sometimes a question in a subject line actually performs even better in terms of open rates. So keep that in mind. You'll see some of these that haven't been sent off very much, and that's because we actually are changing these and we're adding new emails within this sequence to, to make it even better for people. Uh, so people haven't even received a lot of these emails yet, uh, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, so this is, this is showing you uh, the first email that was uh, immediately sent out. I also start really quickly by confirming that they are in the right spot. I actually took survey results from people who have told me that they have yet to start a business and actually just inserted a lot of their own language in this email too. So this first part that says, hey, quick question, do any of the following statements reflect where you're at right now with your desire to create an online business? And I'm overwhelmed from all the information available to me. The fear of failure is stopping me from moving forward. I don't know where to start. These are all things that this particular audience has told me. So because I'm rehashing it for them right here at the beginning of this email, they are going to understand that they are in the right spot. And like I said, they're gonna be more likely to open those future emails. So just wanted to show you sort of a little bit of what's happening here. I'll get into the more advanced stuff that I hinted at in video number six. Uh, but in the next video, I wanna show you broadcast emails. So those are emails that get sent out at the time at which you uh, send them to everybody or those certain segments of your list that you choose to send them to at that time. But for now, work on your autoresponder series and make sure to head on over to emailthesmartway.com. That'll redirect you here where you can download your free copy of Email the Smart Way uh, and, and check out everything else I have related to email. That's gonna be really important because this gives you a ton of different kinds of emails that you can put within your autoresponder series. So like how ConvertKit kind of gives you, gives you that framework, well this, will give you specific templates that you can use for different kinds of emails you could send your audience because you know there's a lot of people out there who talk about how to build your list, but there's hardly anything out there about what to actually offer your audience and what kinds of emails to send your list. Well, this right here will be your answer, so just click get your free copy now, put your name and email, and then I'll send that to you uh, free of charge, and that's there for you. So anyway, check that out, emailthesmartway.com, and like I said, I'll see you in the next video. Hey, thanks again for watching this video. If you wanna check out the next video in the How to Start an Email List series, you can check out video five over here. And if you wanna check out all the videos in one convenient spot for you, plus some giveaways and other information to help you, just uh, click over here and uh, head on over to startanemaillist.com. Video, video four, if you want some more, it's time to feel alive and go to video five.